Martin says, here we go, Martin, my top tip is to soak berries, blueberries, etc. into water with a tablespoonful of bicarbonate of soda for around 10 minutes, then rinse and store in the fridge to make them last about five times longer. This is a kitchen, this is a, a culinary cuisinal tip, um, a super hack on Super Hack Thursday. Do you think we might have somebody around who, who could gift us a few more of these ones? I wonder. In this particular lane, the foodie lane? I wonder, I wonder whether the he foodie has the Thursday credentials. Lane. Who, who, who might you be talking <laughs> Our about? Our next guest is what you get if you cross 12 cookbooks, 5 restaurants, 3 Michelin stars, most of the shows on your telly, and a great big West Country grin. His latest cookbook, <laughs> Tom Kerridge Cooks Britain, is out now so please welcome Marlowe's finest sorry second finest Tom <laughs> Kerridge that's good isn't it a bit of a curveball yeah, yeah curveball like Ricky Gervais sec- always gets in the way yeah. I presume that's who you're referring to there are others how are you mate I'm very well thanks what's what a, a west country guy. grin what's that oh, what you've got there oh, all right all oh, right. right yeah all uh, right Tom Cage cooks Britain a journey through the best of British food did you hear that um the tip about um I prolonging did the blueberries the one the you life. just read out blueberries do you recognize that no I've never heard that before in my life I like ge- <laughs> only because generally in restaurants and pubs you, you kind of buy what you need every day so yeah. like you get deliveries every day so we I've never had to wash them in bicarbonate soda and leave it uh, like I did it's not something that I normally do with fruit. Yeah, How- also, blueberries. Why do you want to to prolong their fridge life by five times? Surely, I, yeah. blueberries. You, you get some blueberries. You just eat the blueberries. Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> maybe, maybe a day, maybe two days. Yeah, Put right. them in the freezer. Frozen blueberries in a smoothie because that cools the smoothie like ice cubes would, and you get the blueberries in exactly. there. Exactly. Or well. jam. You make jam. Make jam. Ju- make jam. But all this bike up. What's going on? What are you? Are you a, what, a blueberry collector? What's going on with this? <laughs> a blueberry collector. Do you have any soup hacks for us? Kitchen no, hacks. Uh, to be honest, no. They're all <laughs> like. Well, Tom's well, book is out now. Good luck, uh, everyone. <laughs> in terms of kitchen hack, what well, I generally, I, I always try to find the simplest things. Like, you know, like you're always trying to solve problems. Actually, like you talk about there, the, the shelf life of blue. Well, just. Make it simpler. Just buy what you need. Buy what you, buy need. What you need. The big, the best kitchen hack ever is get a good chopping board and really nice knives. That's it. Well, no, like, that's after a good that, hack, though. That is yeah, a good like, hack. And then everybody says, I'm always asked, right, what are the best knives to buy? Because everyone wants to know, like, you know, what's the really expensive ones? Yeah. Is it like... You got you got to go into the shop. You got to feel it. You got to hold it in your hand. Don't buy a knife like from an internet. Go into a, a shop. There's one on um, Bank Street, it. Japanese knife shop. Yeah, go feel yeah, it. Mega. Need, yeah, mega. But they, you haven't got. It could be one of the cheap plastic ones <laughs> that fit in your hand, and you go. Actually, this feels like if it feels like an extension of your hand and not like you're holding something. That's the knife for you. Right. And I'm sorry if it's one that drops in at about seven hundred and fifty quid. But that's the knife you need. Can I just add to this? I mean, you you are the Michelin star chef, and I'm not. But all I would say is this: we we've had a couple of posh knives. In fact, you you've given me a posh knife with yeah. with, a, with a sharpening stone with a sharpening as well, with a whetstone. Yeah. Um, but I've got to say, it's a bit like a car. People say to me, "We really want a classic car for the weekend," and I say, "Okay." I say, "Well, first of all, what do you want? What do you want it for?" They go, "Oh, we don't know." Okay. Well, why do you want one then? You know, just just go and look at other people's, for example. Um, so that's the first question that flummoxes them. And then the second question I, I, is I say, what's your maintenance budget? Yeah. And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, buying it's one thing, but depending on what, you can buy a low maintenance, so say you buy an old Triumph Spitfire or something like that, zero maintenance really, you know, yeah. maybe a few quid now and again. But you buy anything that's slightly digital, slightly sort of mid-90s going into the noughties, the service, you get to buy that car at the wrong time, the service bills are going to be through the roof. Yeah. It's the same with knives. You've got to look after You've it. You've got to look after them, man. Look, otherwise it don't work. It, the, so it doesn't matter how much you pay. If you bought a 750 pound knife when it's blunt, it ain't going to chop anything. Or, and, uh, the, the fine of the blade, the easier it is to, to chip, isn't it? That's exactly that. How, how does that, because a couple of hardships, none of the ones you've given us, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're framed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how does that happen? Is that, because they say don't put posh knives in the dishwasher, but I heard that was more about the wooden handle that'll be about the handles and that'll be the handles coming apart it's about but it is also depends on the steel the quality of the steel um it's if it's thin if 
it's folded, if it's molded, and if it's pressed, like a lot of the Japanese ones are folded steel. Right. So it has hundreds and hundreds of folds, which keeps it super strong. But at the same point, that fine edge at the bottom can easily chip. And then you've got to have it re-ground in. And yeah, like, but you do it, like you say, it's maintenance. You've got to look after it. Yeah. Everything is always about looking after it's it. It's funny, isn't it? Because you, you, know, you buy stuff because either you need a bit of retail therapy, you've got too much money, more money than sense, or you just fancy, you know, you, you deserve something, a sort of metaphorical or materialistic pattern on the back but if it involves upkeep you've got to think about that yeah and if you go into a professional kitchen say you've got 10 12 chefs in a professional kitchen like at the hand of flowers and they've all they all have their own knives no one uses anybody else's yeah, knife yeah, no yeah. one touch you don't don't touch it because you sharpen it in a different way you're the stroke different on angle. the steel on a different angle like a nib so, of a pen exactly and you don't touch my knife don't touch my knife don't touch my knife yeah. you like don't touch my knife yeah that's what goes on in kitchens don't touch my wife don't touch my knife that's exactly the same yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly more. great book man thanks Tom buddy. cooks britain it was was going to happen this one wasn't it yeah do you know what it's been amazing we feel we filmed a tv show to go with it last year and it was actually came from a mixture of the two things the tv show was a it was a nod back to you do you remember like old school tv so when i first started cooking gary rhodes was you know also ended up Bless working him. for him what a hero but he used to do this roads around britain show where he would drive best, around the country and visit ever. producers and it was just so simple and beautiful and brilliant and then rick did one where he's in a land rover you know and rick's visiting you know british food heroes so it's a very then similar sort of thing don't forget the f word floyd, floyd. oh yeah I was you wrote the book yeah i was like well, the f word that was, that was gordon's show that was set in, <laughs> that, was, that was set in a studio and he just shouted a lot yeah no it, it, it was just a case of going actually go and visit producers suppliers up and down the country remind ourselves of why great britain is amazing find key ingredients that are just like the superheroes of it and cook simply now the nice thing about it is because because we were in this food truck i was in this 1957 chevy right we're talking about maintenance i mean that thing like between you and me like we filmed it that i'm driving it around yeah. but a lot of the time it was on a low oh, loader yeah, broken yeah, yeah getting That's how transported Tom does it, apparently. yeah yeah very similar it, it was, so when you get there you, you're going to cook a dish in in with this truck simple easy make it the hero so actually the recipes that come with it are really simple and easy and quick and they're just a celebration of like we got in front of us some strawberries and shortbread it's about the strawberries like amazing strawberries in Scotland and how do we celebrate Scotland that? Scottish red fruits mate are the best do you want to know why is it the, you'll, you might, you'll is like it, this I is know it you the like air the, the fresh air it's a mixture of that and longer sunshine hours so where oh. you've got the sun coming up early and going down later if they're in a polytunnel we went to Arbroath right which is on the coast and it's very famous for Arbroath smokies which are uh, like beautiful smoked had it however However, the red fruits from there. So on this cliff face, they've got these amazing polytunnels. The sun comes up, starts ripening the fruits, and it's there for longer. So it's it was warmer. But in the evening, these sea breezes come oh. in, blow through the polytunnels, cool everything down. The sun comes up again. So that's ripening cooling ripening cooling drives the flavor profiles and the sugars and the sweetening process of the fruits which is why scottish red fruits are arguably the best in the world and it's because of it's colder sea breezes beautiful sunshine and it's mega and then when you get that and you eat strawberry you just go they're just amazing that, isn't it? you yeah. don't need to do much with it and uh, but i learned that you know and you just go what a brilliant journey to be yeah on. but you speak it so fluently so it obviously hit home didn't it yeah massive yeah. and i was just like oh god it makes so much sense you know why strawberries in a field that aren't in a polytunnel that are grown in the uk down you know somewhere else and get loads of sunshine they taste lovely when you're you know doing your pick your own and you're eating them from yeah, the yeah. and, you, and it's great but actually the reality of it is how do you dry and it's the same strawberry but just Longer sunshine, cold sea breeze. Yeah, I think when um, Mother Nature is your executive farmer, you're in good hands, aren't you? Yeah, and that's absolutely. what we're eating the seasons. I know. I know. Look, we we are guilty as anybody else as, as getting plastic packs of mango from Sainsbury's. You know, in December. Yeah. We all do it now. We shouldn't do it, but we do do it. But if we could stick to seasonal, and no better seasonal country on the planet than the United Kingdom. No, I know it's amazing. Isn't it. We got four defined seasons, and they really have. And if you think about the food and the produce, so if you think of France. France, right? France is some of the most amazing food in the world, but that's regional, right? So French food is amazingly regional. You've got North Normandy, you know, where you've got butter and apples and a bit like the south coast of England. Then you've got the Alpine region, then you've got Mediterranean, and then you've got, you know, West Coast fish and all that. But actually, the UK, we're not that regional in terms of produce. What we are is seasonal. And, you know, when you come through for the winter, where you've got the root vegetables and you think of slow braising and cut, but then spring, there's nowhere else better for spring asparagus. Right now, it's coming right to the end of the season, but it is just the most amazing. The English asparagus is the 
best in the world. Like, and you can get it. This is the sort of thing you buy asparagus all year round, yeah. and we'll get it. But when you're buying it all year round, you get it coming from Chile, right? Well, what's the point in that? Yeah. Come on, like, let's get let's get rid of carrots. Well, you can always tell, can't you? Because if you're getting unseasonal. Um, asparagus in the UK it's more like a birthday cake candle and then when ours comes out they look like church candles yeah. that's the difference isn't well, it they're yeah, big it they're is, robust did you know that yeah. even small asparagus and large asparagus are the same age it could be they just grow it just it's loads of different freaky types of asparagus that are just growing in the same so you might get great big thick wide beautiful asparagus and ones at the same length tall, but just tall and skinny it's a little bit like me and you stood next to each other mate you are into this aren't you I can tell I, I love can it tell. yeah He's, he's living and breathing this one. I, I love it for you, Tom. Sausages with Swede mash and onion gravy. Okay, it looks great. Winter one. Yeah, I can't I can't really look at this book too much because it's making me too hungry. Yeah, I haven't eaten I, yet. I have that trouble. Um, <laughs> a beautiful photography again, as always. Vassos said live on the show today... Yeah. He said, oh, don't you know, M&S use um, engine oil um, on their adverts <laughs> instead of syrup because it looks better. No, said, he saw that on a hack yeah, on Instagram but, by the way, during the I, week. I saw the by, same by thing. By the way, I said they wouldn't be allowed to. It'd be illegal. Yeah. 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 That's, you you work with these people. Yeah, I do work with them. I work with them, I work with M&S on, like, on a daily basis. Making In fact, I was making an advert with them in the North Sea this week. Did you see any week. engine oil on plates? Oh, no, none on plates. <laughs> oh, 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 only in the massive fishing boat that I was in. Washing yeah. powder on... So, Beer? Yeah, washing powder in beer to make to it froth frothy. It up. That is, I saw the same video this and I was like, listen, I've been, I've been doing food and food styling for ages, mate. And team. I have never seen that. You're not allowed to, are you? You're not no. allowed to do that. It's no, illegal. No, no. It's you illegal. You have to, no, it has to be Is it illegal? Of course it's illegal. It's yeah, trade it has to be the product. Didn't they use Swede in apple pies, a big fast food chain not that I'm not going to mention? in adverts for actual food from company. You're not allowed to do it. It's the trade. It's fraud. Okay. You nut job. <laughs> anyway, back to your photography here. I'm That's just... naturally not a real exactly. sausage. It's I was going to say. Vassos, why is that if it's not a sausage? What is that, Vassos? Yeah? I, I don't know. Is the mashed potato... Is it your great, great grandfather's <laughs> is... big thumb? I don't know. That, that mashed potato looks a bit like vanilla ice cream to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to go with this. I thought about it, but it would have melted too bad if you put a hot sausage in it. I, don't... <laughs> I mean, you know, there's mash and there's mash. I could I could go, go a buffet of mash, you know, all the different mashes yeah. um, uh, whatever mash, mash it is you it get a mash butter. what do they call the, the mashing the, the a ricer a potato ricer, ricer. Mash, a potato ricer yeah where well, you put the potato in you <gasps> squeeze it through and it squ- squishes it out at the end is that, there's a bit of that going on there there's there? a lot of that going in the end and listen I, I mean that that's a, that's a beautiful mash but I mean in all in all arguments say, you, you know, mash isn't mash unless it's 50% fat which is butter and cream and, and, and milk kind of all heated up so you, basically what we do uh, the way that I view mash is it should be Thickened cream, cream that's thickened with potato. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And is that full fat milk? Are we talking full fat yeah, milk? Yeah, hundred percent. Of course it is. It's all about flavour. <laughs> yeah. It's all about fat is flavour, everybody. Fat is flavour. Well, where do we go? We can go anywhere you like. Next, we can go to uh, roast pork belly with fennel and apple. Tell us about the, the fennel and the, apple slaw. Yeah, really, the, really the, simple to make. It's about this the Britishness of this. Yeah, this is a great thing. This is really good for like kind of like now. Like, and we think of slow cooked dishes, right? And we think of uh, meats that need roasting for a long time and you go oh god yeah it's a winter thing it's not if you think of hot countries and you think of some of the food that they have if you think of I don't know whether it's India or North Africa if you think of tagines and you think of slow cooked curries and you think I mean they're hot countries in this country we just assume things that we bits of meat you cook for a long time should be winter not true pork belly then serve with a slaw made with apple and fennel becomes so it's the sort of thing that you dump outside you sit there in the garden you've got loads going on kids running around big chunks of meat cutting it off it hasn't got look pretty on a plate I mean it does in the picture but you can just do lumps of it's it like, mate. it's not it's real fine. that's why not yeah. real yeah. that's what it that's is not yeah. a real, that's not a real pork belly that one's cardboard spray painted <laughs> yes. with um, cream yeah. Uh, raspberry ripple ice cream it looks great you double scoop in there aren't you Tom mm. yeah you got a double scoop um, homemade ice cream let's speak to that for a sec shall you? yeah shall you? okay again it's about product and produce and I was quite well I was quite lucky when I, I went dairy for, I was milking cows right for the TV show it was unbelievable I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning down in Devon milking cows and the fat content that comes from amazing pastures so you get richer cream use it like it's just beautiful and if you could an ice cream maker if you've got an ice cream machine churning something as simple as that 
it's, it's just stunning. It, like, and make your own raspberry sauce. Yeah. Like, and that's really easy to do. Is get get yourself some Scottish raspberries, put them in a pan, a little splash of water, a little bit of icing sugar, that's it. Bring it up to the boil, blend it, and you can do that in one of your Nutri Bullets. You haven't got to do it in, you know, like you haven't got to have a full food processor. You can just do it in one of your smoothie makers. Pass that through a sieve, then fold that through the ice cream right at the end. Put it in your freezer. And one of those ice cream churners, they're dead easy to make. And if you can't even be to bothered make. To, the ice cream is dead easy to make. Not the, Well, you can churn it. You can do it in an ice bowl and whatever. But they're not that super expensive. And if you can't even be bothered to make your ice cream, just get custard. Custard yeah. is the same thing. Churn it, fold in the so rest, fresh raspberry. So Tash makes these amazing smoothies for me every day, right? She, we have, a, we have a, tea, a lunchtime one and a tea time one. Uh, the lunchtime one is light, bananary, and the tea time one is blueberry and darker. And it used, there used to be a combination of the two, but then we found out that the... The nutritional virtues of blueberries are negated and neutralised by bananas. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, know so that. yeah, so now we have them separately. But are those and blueberries have they been marinated for exactly five days in bicarbonate the old soda? Bicarbonate <laughs> soda. Hey, that going on? Moish too, moish too. But I just looked at a bit of smoothie that was left the other day, the lunchtime one, the banana one, and I thought that's that that is way that that is a because it tastes like melted Ben and Jerry's, it's, and it's really good for you. It's yeah. like unbelievably good for you. It tastes like the best thing you've ever had. I thought, well, let's just reverse this. Let's let's freeze it. And I thought this is a, a tub of ice cream waiting to happen. But of course, then it came out of the freezer that night, and it's not not at all. No, it's rock solid. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you, so what does the ice cream maker do to it? Then? So it churns it. You need the fat content in it. What does that smoothie? What's in your smoothie? Is it is it just like milk or is it, is it what's the cream or what's the fat it's, content um, that goes through almond it? milk uh, the, mm. there's loads of nuts there's um, so, the, high, all so the there you go that's the problem it's a high water content so a high water content freezes like ice right so what you need is to be able to churn it you need it to have a fat content in it maybe eggs and sugar as well some sort of sugars an invert sugar would be fine if you're trying to avoid like an carcass. invert sugar so something what's like what's an invert sugar so, something like glycerine or something uh, agave would probably be nice a syrup what's or that other one called that, that everybody's raving about at the moment not mm. garve. It sounds a bit like garve. It's seve or something like that. Or oh, do I don't know. No. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, something like that. So something that stabilizes. So sugar will help control. So it means Stevie. that it's smooth. Stevia. 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 Okay. So yeah, would yeah, that yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. That would work. Yeah. Okay. That would work. So you need you need a syrup that holds it. That means that it doesn't crystallize in the ice pocket. Yeah. And yeah, ice cream is a very very complex thing. Actually, when you come to think. Because it's it. funny because the smoothie does taste and feel in the mouth like a melted ice cream yeah. so I just thought well that will work in reverse of course yeah. it won't no no no, okay. no. You, you need you need the fat contents and the sugars to be able to work so that the freezing process doesn't harden it too much oh gosh Tom this is great man great blue cheese Alfredo love it I know I, I, I'll be so lucky this love year it. like go, driving around the country seeing where's the, these where's space, the Britishness there the blue cheese Right, go on, tell yeah, us. The, the we're, we're great at cheese, we're, aren't we? We're, yeah, we're, oh my God, we're, we're so good at cheese. now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we win so many cheese awards. And and again, because of our dairies, because of where we, we, we're so good with pastures and we're also so good at ageing, the process, the understanding. Like some of the best cheeses in the world come from, like hard cheeses, there's nothing to replace cheddar. Like amazing cheddar. I could eat cheddar, for the, I could eat cheddar know, for the rest of my life. It's just incredible, isn't it? You know, and, and then when you get some really old ones with these little salt crystals forming them and they, they're they extra, <sighs> like extra, extra sharp. You know, when they got that massive kick to it. Cheddar, British cheeses are so, celebrated across the world globally. They are they are the best. Everyone, again, thinks of France and those French cheeses and because that's regional. But actually in the UK, we're very, very good. Soft cheeses, kind of like Brie star ones, we're really good at. Blue cheese. I Stinking mean, Stilton. Bishop. Look at Stilton. Stinking yeah. Bishop. Oh, my God. A washed rind cheese. Stinking Bishop, I mean, is amazing. So a washed rind are the ones that are really smell. You know, like sometimes you've eaten a little bit of it and you put it in your fridge and then you open the fridge the next morning. Morning, and you're going to get, I don't know, get some milk out to make a cup of tea. To, I know and you go, Whoa. That. I've got a soup pack for that. What have you got? Eat it all. Don't yeah. put it in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> why would you not? Why would you stop eating this? We're well, back to the blueberry thing. Why I'm would you buy it and not eat yeah. it? Also, don't, don't whatever you do, do know whatever you do, put your cheese in the fridge. Do you know, if you put it somewhere cool in a cupboard, but don't put it in the fridge because there's nothing. It's like warm, warm, amazing wine that should be chilled. You can't do. You can't have cold cheese. It's the same kind of issue. You need your cheese to be room temperature, and the softer cheeses should be oozing out to greet you. Yeah, shouldn't they? They Ooh. should be coming to meet you on the plate. What a nice Don't turn of so? Can I pinch that? Yeah, of course you can. They could be oozing out to meet. Uh, you. Who's going to tell France, by the way? 
Who's going to tell France about the cheese? I don't think we've I don't think we've plucked up the courage to tell them about the cheese yet. Don't worry, I'm telling them. Like honestly, one of my best mates, Claude Bozzi, two Michelin star French chef, two two Michelin star restaurant. I constantly tell him all the time. Honestly, mate. Yeah, but who's going to tell him about the sparkling wine as well? Because oh, yeah. we're now better at that than them, aren't we? Yeah, well? no, he knows. Don't worry, I reiterate to him. Why do you think he's here? Why do you think he's here? He's got two two Michelin star restaurants here in London. He's not in France, is he? <laughs> There we yeah. go. <laughs> I, I, what about how's this sound? How's this sound, everybody, for the future? Two Dunlop stars. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. Is Dunlop a British company? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. All right, Birmingham. Birmingham. <laughs> the Dunlop building. I love the Dunlop dart, don't you? Yeah. Um, all right, Tom, it's a great book, man. Great show. You can still catch up on the show. Because you can nowadays. Starts and everything. In, no, it starts, it doesn't start. It starts at the beginning of July. Oh, it's the adverts I've been watching. Yeah, it's the adverts. We have a lot of that going on. About there is exactly yeah. the same. It produces the people that we're visiting, but this show starts at the beginning of July. Apologise. Apologise. Tom Carriage, Cooks Britain, the book and the show. The book is the precursor to the show. The show hasn't been on yet i've just seen it in my imagination i do apologize but that's because i see you all the time anyway that's it exactly hanging out uh, we're, we're both of us walking behind ricky gervais Ricky's as he gervais, goes up the high just, street just it's trying to get any kind of residual heat from <laughs> <Yeah>. his <laughs> global eternal fame that we can congratulations on pub in the park thank you bird Honestly, better than ever wasn't it marla was unbelievable this year it was so good we it was the energy was brilliant the the atmosphere was great we were so lucky the with the weather because jumping it, time was jumping it rained all the way up the, until thursday afternoon then we opened we had sunshine all the way up until Sunday evening Paloma Faye finished with, and she was outstanding and then Monday it started raining again it so we, we were so lucky and the same is going to happen in Chiswick it's going to happen in Reigate and it's also going to happen in St Albans Sunshine Pub in the Park and there's tickets still available okay, Come and Sunshine see guaranteed or Tom will give you the money back himself mm. Ab- yeah absolutely <laughs> awesome blue cheese whichever one <laughs> Tom thanks man thanks buddy Tom Carriage Cooks Britain we're back tomorrow round of applause yeah because people love Tom Control round of applause yeah. Woohoo, baby!